Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Noonday Prayer from St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in the Green Lake neighborhood of Seattle. And we are doing our Noonday Prayer today for the September 16th, which according to the calendar of the Episcopal Church is for St. Ninian. St. Ninian. I found a graphic and then also have printed his name next to my face so you uh, can learn a little bit about him. Uh, we will be following our order of service from the Book of Common Prayer beginning on page 103 and continuing to page 107. So the Book of Common Prayer, page 103. If you'd like to look at a worship bulletin for this service, you can find it by uh, looking below in the details on YouTube or on Facebook, wherever you're finding this video, and it should be printed there for you or a link is provided to you. If you go to our own website, www.standrewsseattle.org, spell out all those words, uh, and click on Virtual Church for Wednesday, you can find the bulletin there as well. I, I will tell you more about Ninian when I get to my uh, reflection section, uh, and I will just talk us through the service. Um, and I just invite you to take a little break from the busyness of your day and to realize that we're always in God's presence, even though sometimes we're too busy to notice. And we consecrate the day by offering prayers to God at this noon hour. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. If you have your Book of Common Prayer, we will do uh, Psalm 126 that is printed in the Noonday Prayer section of your prayer book on page 105. And together, let us pray Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who will go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come back with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our passage of scripture for today comes from the scriptures appointed for this commemoration of Saint Ninian, a reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples far from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I have said, I have labored in vain. 
I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward is with God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Here ends the reading. Saint Ninian is one of those saints that we really don't have a lot of information about. In fact, um, what we do know cannot really be corroborated by any uh, external historical sources. He appeared in uh, some writings of the monk Bede, Saint Bede, and also, he's mentioned in the writings of Elred of Riveau, but Elred lived in the year 1160, and we think that Ninian is from uh, around the year uh, 350 or so. So not a whole lot is really known about him. And as I am writing, or to telling you from one of the... Uh, Sources I'm looking at, there is no unchallenged historical evidence to support any of the stories about Ninian. And all the sources had political and religious agendas that were served by their accounts of the saint. Very typical. You know, this the world at that time, uh, information was passed on through oral tradition. And sometimes the kernel of truth about someone was often adapted in order to make a point or to further some sort of political agenda or religious agenda. So, as modern historical people, we don't know a whole lot about Ninian. However, what our tradition does say is that he was a Briton, that uh, North western part of what we know as France today, Britain. He was from there and he studied in Rome. And then he established an Episcopal see at the Candida Casa, the White House, in Whithorn. That's the town, Whithorn. And then he named the see for St. Martin of Tours. But what is the most important part of Ninian's ministry was that he converted a tribe in southern Scotland, a tribe known as the Picts, P-I-C-T, Pict, that he converted them to Christianity and that he is buried at Withorn. Variations of the story add that he actually met St. Martin of Tours that his father was a Christian king, and that he was buried in a stone sarcophagus near the altar of his church. Further variations assert that he left for Ireland and that he died there in 432. Dates for his birth are derived from the traditional mention of St. Martin, who died in 397. So, I'm correcting myself here. Um, Ninian, or the person that we call Ninian, uh, probably lived in the early 400s and possibly died in the year 432. So what do we do with this? Well, somebody uh, evangelized, the Pict, evangelized the Picts 
someone spread the gospel to parts of Scotland that did not yet know of Christianity. It is attributed to this fellow that we know as Ninian. And uh, so that's what's significant today, that even in the early church, the gospel was being spread by people of great faith to the ends of the earth. And that's what we remember today as we commemorate Ninian and all of us who are called through baptism to proclaim the gospel where we actually are, in our workplaces or wherever God happens to send us. So we're grateful to God for that, and we ask that we will be given the grace in order to evangelize and spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. Let us continue with our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. And let us pray. The Collect from Ninian. O God, by the preaching of your blessed servant and Bishop Ninian, you caused the light of the gospel to shine in the land of Britain. Grant, we pray, that having his life and labors in remembrance, we may show your thankfulness by following the example of his zeal and patience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may add your prayers and intercessions now. I do ask for your prayers for all of the people who have been touched by the climate fires in our area, for the citizens who live in Washington, Oregon, California, and other states in the West who are experiencing terrible air quality, for those who are suffering because of that, for those who fight the fires, for those who have lost their homes, for the countless numbers of animals who have died and then have been driven from their forest homes due to fire. We pray for wisdom in this election season and that the Spirit will energize and touch people so that they uh, vote and participate in our society for the common good. We pray for all people who are sick, for those who are recovering from surgery, especially our dear parishioners Donna Austin and Connie Carlson. We pray for family members who support the sick, for those living with dementia, for people who are approaching the end of their lives, for those who are dying, and their family members and caregivers. We pray for people who grieve. We pray for the poor uh, and those who do not have any place to lay their heads, for those who are unhoused. We pray for all who are unemployed or underemployed and are suffering uh, due to the difficulties imposed by the coronavirus pandemic for those who are experiencing financial hardship, for those people who have been touched by this dreaded virus. We pray that God will give us encouragement and strength and comfort in these difficult times. We praise God for the beauty of creation. And we remember God's goodness to us. 
please offer your prayers now, silently or aloud. And I will now offer a blessing for your journey. May the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of Almighty God, one holy and undivided Trinity, be among you and remain with you forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I do thank you for joining with us today for our noonday prayer. You can tune in later this evening for evening prayer if you'd like, and then certainly join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. on Facebook for a watch party, um, and, or if you'd like to view that service at your leisure, uh, you can do that on uh, YouTube. We also have our contemplative service that you can uh, view anytime on Sunday, though that's typically offered in the evening on Sundays, our contemplative service with music in the style of today. Please know that all of the people and the vestry and the clergy of St. Andrew's Episcopal Church love you, we care about you, and we are praying for you and our world in these troubled times. And I wish you much peace. God bless.